this is Natalie from Namaste Farm. Today I'm going to talk about fleece on the animals. So I have Todd here, and he's a Wensleydale, and he's probably one of my best sheep. He is a weather, and that makes his fleece nicer than if he were an intact male or actually even a ewe. Um, ewes usually are going to be using the, a lot of their energy for pregnancy or for lactation, and um, then of course rams are using their energy to breed, and also they will usually have sort of a musty kind of smell to them. So really the best of all worlds, if you want great fleeces, is a weather. Okay, so if you look here on Todd, you can see that this area here, which is called the bridge, it just looks a little bit different. And some people will skirt this out. A lot of the time I will skirt it out because you can tell that it actually looks different than the rest of the fleece. You really, what you want to have is you want to have an animal that's really uniform from the, from, the, from the front of its chest here all the way across the side and through the bridge area. Realistically, in most sheep, that's almost an impossibility. And so we expect that the bridge area is going to have like this sort of straight hair and the lock formation isn't going to be very good. If I raise it up and I, you can see underneath, you can see that it does still have some curl to it. And if he were a, a, an animal that I was going to show, I'd probably be able to trim these little outer hairs, um, spritz it with some water and mineral oil, and have it, uh, the, the ringlets begin to form again, just like the rest of this fleece. That said, a lot of this I, I wouldn't really want to use, and I would skirt out. The best part of the animal is the shoulder right here, and sort of in the sides, as you can see. And look at these gorgeous ringlets that Todd has. I mean, honestly, they're amazing. And this is just natural. I haven't really touched his fleece. It's a, it's a really nice length, about six to seven inches. And so until it starts getting past seven inches, I don't have to fuss with it too much to keep it beautiful. When you look at an animal and you see the neck area, this is the place where you're gonna have sort of open locks as they get older. You can see that the curl on his chest here is a little more open than his shoulder, the rib, and the back area. That just happens with age. So if I were to get a fleece and I could see that I had this nice tight curls in the bag and then some of this more open stuff, I would instantly know that this open stuff was probably from the neck area. If we look down here on the leg, we can see that the, the, that the fleece is tighter curled. See, it's shorter and tighter. The fleece will be a shorter and staple and the curls just are, um, they're just a little bit more pearl. That's the way it grows on the face. You'll see more pearling, and on the legs, right here, you'll see more pearling, but it always will be shorter. It just doesn't grow at the same length as, let's say, the shoulder, or the barrel, or the back. The place that it seems to grow the fastest, I would say, and where you get your longest staple, is in the neck area. And I don't know if that's maybe sort of an optical illusion because the curls are more open, or if it actually, this area does grow faster, but the neck area always seems to be the longest. So if you were to purchase a fleece and you looked in the bag and you saw that you had a bunch of beautiful ringlets but then you had some stuff that looks kind of smashed, see how it looks kind of smashed all the time? You would instantly know that would be the bridge. If you saw that you had more open curls but some tighter curls, you would know that would be the neck. If you had shorter pieces that were more tightly pearled, you would know that that was from the face or from the leg area. It's important to note that when we're shearing at a long wool like this that hasn't been coated, that you don't get a whole entire fleece that looks like a pelt. Um, if you have like a, a fine wool or something, some sort of a, a, a sheep that has a more compacted wool, when you shear it, it does come out literally, you can lay out the fleece like it's a pelt. On these, that doesn't happen. These ringlets just fall to the ground, and it's really difficult to be able to place them and like reenact the scene, right? to be able to place all the different parts of the fleece and know where they came from. But you don't need to do that because if you just have a basic understanding, knowing that the curls are going to be more open on the chest, they're going to be flatter and not as nice with and sort of hairy looking, that comes from the bridge. The shorter fibers that are tightly curled come from the leg and the face. You can recreate um, and know exactly where the parts of your fleece came from. In a few minutes, I'm going to take you up and I'm going to show you a fleece out of the bag and we'll sort of demonstrate that. Okay, now I'm going to take these bags and I'm going to show you in here how I'm just going to dive in and figure out what part of the body the fleece came from. If I look in here, I can see instantly that this open fleece here came from the neck. I just know that because I look at the rest of the fleece and it's more tightly curled. 
Can you see? Instantly I know it has to be from the neck. Then if I look and I see these short little tight, tight pieces like this, that tells me it probably came from the face or from the leg. If it came from the leg, normally it's gonna be a lot more dirty because it, they will have been laying on their legs. They fold their legs underneath their body and that's what keeps them off the ground. And so it'll be much more discolored. So if I wanted to actually know what, where this came from, whether it be the leg or the face, I'd go through this whole fleece and I would look to see um, if I had other pieces like this that were super, super dirty, and then I would assume possibly that that came from the leg and this came from the face. So when I go through this, when you get a fleece and it's the entire fleece, every once in a while you're gonna do, you're gonna get what's called tags. And in this fleece, there, there aren't any. Every, you know, you don't want tags, obviously. But every once in a while it will happen. I mean, we're human, we're not perfect skirters, right? This kind of stuff normally a person would skirt out. I know that this came from the tail area because it has urine stains. Dirt stains and grass stains don't look like this. This is definitely urine. If I pick this up, I can clearly see here's more neck. You can just tell. Look at the way these, look at the way these curls are. See how open they are? Clearly this is from the neck. If I grab this and I show you this fleece part, this is probably from the shoulder or from the sides, my favorite part. If you want doll hair, you don't mind having it come from the neck because people that want doll hair normally want things that aren't super tightly curled. And so sometimes you can have an animal that's just a little bit older and while most of the body is too tight for doll hair people, often you can just sell the neck portions as doll hair. So coming over here and looking at a sheep fleece, because this was mohair, so this was from a goat, instantly I see a piece that I can identify as the bridge. See this piece, how it's really flat? I told you, they look kind of flat. The bridge always looks flat and sort of hairy. This part I would normally try to skirt out. When looking over here at these portions, I can feel this is so incredibly filled with lanolin, has a beautiful handle. I'm going to assume that this is going to be the shoulder or the side portion. Let me move my mic. This cat, I'm telling you. They love fleece. They love dirty fleece. Okay, let me grab over here. Okay, I can see here some discoloration, and the fleece is not as good as the shoulder. It's not as bad as the britch, but it does look sort of flattened. I would say that this is probably getting towards the britch, or maybe it's on the very, very t hind quarters of it like the tail portion, right before you hit the tail on the top, on the very top of the rump where the pins are. That's what I would say about this part of the fleece. I could basically take this entire fleece and lay it out and tell you what portions I think that, that the fleece came from the animal and I bet you I'd be, probably 95% of the time I'd be correct. Here, you can see these little pieces. I'm, I'm like a thousand percent sure that this came from the face. See how it's tight, it's really short and it's got tight purling? Definitely from the face of the legs. And a lot of the time, based on what kind of breeds you have, you know if it came from the legs. For example, if I have a blue faced Lester, they don't have any belly wool, which you shouldn't be getting anyway because that should be skirted out, but they don't have any belly wool and they don't really have any leg wool. So I would know if I had a piece like this that it probably came from the top of the head, you know, or the, maybe right at the very, very, very point of the skull because they don't have any facial fleece and they don't have, they have any leg fleece. So part of it is knowing what breed you have, knowing where they grow fleece, and then just trying to like reenact the crime. If you have any questions, you can email me at literally at mac.com. Happy spinning, happy knitting.